I'm going to try to teach you Rubenstein's Revenge and Romeo's Revenge. Now obviously these are both pretty difficult tricks. They're easily the most complex three ball patterns I know of. Uh, basically what Mills Mess is to the normal three ball cascade, these tricks are to Mills Mess. So it's like a whole other level of complexity there. Uh, if you don't already know Mills Mess, learn it before you try either of these, because you're going to have trouble. I'm going to start off with Rubenstein's Revenge first, because I feel like Romeo's kind of comes from Rubenstein's rather than the other way around. Romeo's is more kind of like jerky and retarded, and Rubenstein's Revenge can be really nice and flowy if you get it right. So here's what it looks like again. Now you'll notice this ball, the non-glowy one, basically just goes up and down on the outsides. I try to make it curve more like Mills Mess for aesthetic reasons, but functionally it just goes up and down on either side. The middle two are what we're really interested in when we first start out. The center two balls go like this. So that's what you're going to have to learn in the first place. Now first of all, make sure you know what you're trying to make them do. You want to make it look like they're spinning around each other, then they go the other way, they spin around each other. They go the other way, they spin around each other, etc. Now obviously your arms can only cross once. So the way you make it look like they're spinning more is once you're done crossing, you throw this one up and bring this one around here. That brings the illusion of more spinningness going on. I'll do it in the dark real quick and you might see what I mean. Okay. You'll notice it looks like the balls go around each other more times than it would be possible if I was actually holding on to them the whole time. That's the whole point. So I'm going to teach you how to do that step by step, but just keep in mind you want to make it look like they're going around each other. The initial position, one ball in each hand, cross your arms. Put your strong hand on top, palm facing down, and the other hand is going to have the palm facing upwards. Now the first part you're going to want to make the ball spin around each other, so uncross your arms, recross the other way. Again, palm underneath is going to be facing up, hand on top is going to be facing down. At this point your strong hand is going to be on the bottom, and you're going to throw up and across the pattern like that. Your weak hand is going to sweep out underneath that ball and come up to follow it in kind of an arc. So, strong hand on top again, spin around, like that. Practice that a few times. You should kind of come up next to the ball. Now once you reach that position, you're going to let go of this ball, kind of giving it a little nudge that way so it keeps going the right way, and descend upon this ball, clawing it. Now it's kind of awkward because in the real pattern, if you want to make it smooth, you have to claw it kind of like sideways, like this, so you can come around that way again. So just kind of try to grab it with your elbow facing that way, like this. Just grab your arms like this, spin, switch. I'll try to do that in slow motion. Now you'll notice that once you've done the exchange, your arms end up crossed the other way. So you just do the same thing, but backwards. See if you can string that together. Now in the end, you want a really smooth transition between these two. This is where that awkward claw kind of comes in. You do the initial exchange. Once your hand is like this, you want to kind of push out this way and start the circle on the other side. So you want to go like this and spin back the other side. Let me see if I can do it. Sorry about that. And you really have to practice this until it looks nice and smooth all the time. Because if you can't do this without the third ball involved, you're going to have a lot of trouble when the third one starts coming in and messing you up. Here's what it should look like. There you go. Once you're really comfortable with this two ball pattern, you'll start to see that there's a space in it where you can fit the third ball. You'll see my hand just kind of sits there for a minute, waiting. This is the space from the point where the first ball is thrown to the point where you have to catch the ball that's dropped. So from here to there. And it's a pretty big space, so it shouldn't be that hard to fit in the third ball. The thing is, fitting the third ball into the pattern is almost an issue of like feeling it. I can't really explain it that well. But uh, if you have the two ball pattern done really well, it should just kind of stick in it after a few tries. So just go for it. Uh, put the extra ball in your weak hand this time. Kind of odd, but just go with it. Put your strong hand on top, and you're going to do a straight up, pretty high at first so you have enough time, column throw on the outside of your pattern. Once that ball is in the air, you're going to do your two ball just like normal. You'll notice it just kind of fits into my right hand once my strong hand does the first throw. It kind of pops back out to the side and catches that column. So up, and 
you go up a column on the other side. Uh, that's really the best I can do. I hope you can work with that. Uh, once you have that down, you want to make it look nice. It's said that this pattern should look kind of like a Mills mess, but with a sort of modification going on. So obviously your column throw should go a little bit lower and try to be about the same height as your other two balls. And it should be curving in so that the first three throws look like Mills Mess. I don't know how well I'm doing that myself. It's pretty hard to do. But that's a general idea of what it should try to look like. Uh, good luck. Wrong News Revenge is very, very similar to Rubenstein's Revenge. It's kind of like the retarded cousin because it's nowhere near as smooth, it's kind of jerky and awkward. But it's almost the same pattern. Again, you have the one ball on the outside just making the U, and the two balls on the inside doing their weird little spinny thing. Now the difference is in the two balls in the center. Instead of making a nice smooth pattern, going back and forth, they make kind of an awkward reverse pattern. Which, so what happens, is actually time reversed what you would do for Rubenstein's. So whereas normally you would go like this, here you would go like this. So to do Romeo's, start with your arms crossed, strong arm on top again. You're going to come around and your weak arm, which is going to be on top, is going to kind of push downwards forcefully. As you do that, you're going to do a straight up column throw. So once you're done doing that, you come back, this arm stays uh, palm down the whole time. You're going to come up and you're going to throw this ball up across the pattern. You're going to sweep down and grab the column throw. So you're going to go like this. of a snatching motion. So practice that on both sides. What's important is to really force down that top hand. Get that solid. Then with the third ball, it's again like Rubenstein's. You just kind of have to go for it. You're going to throw it up and you're going to end up pushing down the top hand on top of the U ball, which is this one. That's kind of where it fits in. Uh, Romeo's is, is really similar to Rubenstein's again, so if you could do Rubenstein's, then just move on to Romeo's by doing that extra weird backhand thing in the middle of it. Uh, hopefully that's enough information for that one. Good luck.